Hallelujah and thank God again for another opportunity to be a blessing through this platform. Today I want to discuss on the power of gratitude or the power of appreciation. Hallelujah. You know, um, in life we are expected as believers, Christians, to express gratitude to God for all he does for us, for pro protection, preservation, provision for his mercies over our lives. It's supposed to be a continuous uh, thing we ought to do, giving gratitude and thanksgiving to God on a daily basis. So we call that vertical dimension of gratitude, vertical dimension. And also, in life, God has blessed people to touch our lives, people who bless you financially, materially, spiritually, people who bless you who help you in career, in your family. There are those that God has sent to us in human forms. We owe them horizontal gratitude. I call it gratitude in the horizontal dimension. There's a story of a, of a man in the Bible that captures my attention. You know, although on the negative side, his name is Absalom. The story goes thus in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter number 14. Uh, Joab you know, observed David and saw that David wanted, uh, uh, his heart was after Absalom. Absalom uh, was one of David's uh, favorite son. He was a prince, uh, very handsome, tall, with uh, lots of hair, very gifted and talented young man, Absalom. But he was on exile because he had killed one of the king's sons, Amnon, and he fled on exile. So Absalom was on exile for many years. He was stripped naturally stripped of his, um, his benefits as a king's son, uh, bodyguards, protocol, and all that. You know, Absalom had no access to protocol, no access to home, no access to bodyguards. He was stripped of all the benefits of a king's son. He was living in penury and living in lack and living in um, misery while he was on exile. Of course, all the uh, benefits and all the uh, fringe... Uh, uh, advantages of being a, a, a prince was withdrawn from Absalom while he was in exile. But then Joab did the job of bringing him back. Amazing guy, Joab, uh, the commander of David's army, chief of army staff of the nation of Israel. Joab began by hiring a woman, was a wise woman, hired the woman to speak with the king. Hallelujah. And then next, uh, Joab was able to succeed in convincing David to give instructions to bring back Absalom. So in this storyline, we'll see David, Joab, Absalom. Okay, then the Bible tells us that Joab mobilized his forces, brought Absalom back, 2 Samuel chapter 14. Absalom had a beautiful reception coming back to Jerusalem from Geshur, where he was in exile. And uh, Joab made sure he arranged a home for Absalom, arranged back all the palace protocol, bodyguards, feeding, and his life was transformed suddenly again. Kudos to Joab, who was a brain behind bringing back Absalom. And then two years went, Absalom did not see David's face. Because David had given instruction that you may bring back Absalom from exile, let him get back to a good life, let him get back to a life of comfort and leisure and pleasure, a life that is more comfortable, all right? But the king said, I don't want to see his face yet, not now, I don't want to see Absalom yet. So, but Absalom sent a message to Joab and said, can I, can you bring me to see the king? But Joab would not respond because of the king's commandment refusing to see Absalom. Absalom sent the message the second time, can you arrange for me to see the king? And of course, um, Joab turned it down because the king hadn't given an approval. And uh, Joab was, I mean, Absalom was upset. And then he went, told his servants, servants that he had lost servants when he went on exile. He didn't have access to bodyguards and servants. Now, Joab brought him back now he has access to servants, he had access to resources, he had access to a farm, he had access to a home. I even have a feeling that Joab arranged a farm for him to own. His farm was beside Joab's farm. And the Bible tells us 
uh, Absalom gave instructions to his servant to burn down the farm of Joab. So they burnt the whole farm down. And Joab heard about it, ran to where the incident happened, and said, who did this? And they said, well, uh, it's Absalom. He said, Absalom, why did you do this? Absalom said, I called you for me to see the king, and you didn't respond. It's better you keep me in exile rather than bring me back to Jerusalem. I prefer to be in exile. How can I come to Jerusalem and not see the king? That's the first demonstration of ingratitude. You, you never thanked Joab for bringing you from, from exile. See what Joab went through. See all the pressure, all the stress, the resources he expended in ensuring that Absalom comes back to Jerusalem. But Absalom repaid back to Joab by burning down his farm. And there was no apology. Uh, there was no gratitude in the first case. No apology. Are there people in our lives? Are there people amongst us? As some of us are guilty of this. You know, you are given 10, but you are expecting extra 10. And so, because you want extra 10, you never even said thank you for the first 10 that was given to you. Speaking figuratively. Some had access to 1, but they are expecting 10. Some had access to 10. You are expecting 100. There are people in life also, you give them opportunity for platforms one or two platforms opportunity to access some open doors uh, strategic connections and they're expecting more and when you don't do extra for them they get upset they malign you they speak ill about you that's a show of ingratitude the bible tells us in second timothy chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 the earliest times shall come in the last days men shall be lovers of themselves more than lovers of god covetous boasters blasphemers disobedient to parents and then the bible adds one thing in the list of those negative attitudes it says men will be unthankful and then unholy so unthankfulness is categorized in the same uh, issues and sin with blasphemy boasters disobedient to parents uh, unholy and on and on and on unthankfulness ingratitude uh, upsets god god detests ingratitude the Almighty God wants us to be full of gratitude, a vertical dimension of gratitude, and horizontal dimension of gratitude. The vertical dimension is gratitude to God Almighty, and the horizontal dimension is gratitude to those that God has used to help you, uh, whether they are individuals, a church, organization, those that God has used to help you. Unfortunately, because Absalom does not have the culture of gratitude to God, vertical dimension, he never even had culture of horizontal dimension, gratitude to men that God has used. And you see people who don't, who don't show gratitude to God, they are likely not to show gratitude to even people that God has used to help them. So this is a story of Absalom. Joab was upset, but he said nothing. But a few days and a few weeks later, the Bible says Absalom became rebellious. His heir, the fancy of his heir, is the fact that people admired him and loved him in Israel because of his good looks, according to 2 Samuel chapter 14. He had beautiful looks. He had good look. His air, the Bible says he cuts once in a year and he weighs several kilograms heavy. From head to toe, he was flawless, according to scriptures. Very handsome. His air was his beauty and his, uh, his uh, deception and his craftiness was, of course, camouflaged in all this. And then... He decided to plan a coup against David and um, overran the army of David, so to speak. Chased David out of town, chased Joab out of town. Absalom wouldn't even consider the fact that, wait a moment, if I plan a coup, the fellow who suffers will be Joab, who is going to be tasked with mobilizing the army. Joab is going to be tasked with planning the strategy for war. And here was the Joab who brought you back from exile. Here was the Joab who gave you a home, a farm. Here was a Joab who pleaded with David and hired a wise woman to argue your case with David. But now, you didn't even consider Joab's status while you were planning the coup. Ingratitude. Do we have Absaloms in our time who are ungrateful, who have paid evil with those who did them good? The book of Proverbs tells us that uh, uh, the, anyone who pays back evil for good done to him, evil will not depart from their house. That's the scripture. Story of Absalom, he planned the coup, rebelled against David. One day, his army were advancing, the army of Absalom was advancing against the army of David in the battle, all right? 
And then the scripture tells us, as he was moving on his mule, how did he get a mule? Of course, when he came back from exile, Job must have arranged some of the best cars. I use the word cars in contemporary terms. Mule. A mule was one of those beautiful cars, one of those uh, means of mobility. It was a large animal, a mule. And then Absalom was riding on his mule. And the Bible says his beautiful air that was adorable. Everybody praised him for his air. And he got into him was caught by the branch of a tree and then he was hanging in the air and his mule went on and departed from under him now listen to me dear friend whatever you pride in whatever you trust in and that has taken your heart and you are no longer grateful to god who has helped you that same thing whether it's material thing whether it's position in life whether it's a talent or gift or whatever they're going to leave you they're going to leave you to your shame god forbid for those who are ungrateful their meal will lift them will leave them what they pride in what they have confidence in that has taken away the attention from god that has made them to become ungrateful elements is going to leave them his meal left him and went on while he was hanging in the air with the branches of the tree caught his beautiful air again what was his pride and glory put him in trouble it was his heir that was supposed to be the pride and the glory of absalom eventually put him in trouble the air hanged him the tree picked up the air and he was hanging and then they told joab absalom is hanging on the tree and uh, he's trapped and stranded joab said to his men second samuel chapter 18 when you found him did you kill him they said no the king has instructed we should treat him gently and Joab went into action, saw Absalom, looked at Absalom. Absalom looked at him. It was too late for Absalom to say thank you for, bring, for hiring a wise woman to argue my case. It was too late for him to say thank you for bringing me back from exile and giving me a place in Jerusalem. It was too late for him to say I apologize for burning your farm and showing ingratitude. The Bible tells us Joab took the sword and killed Absalom, threw him into a ditch. And that was the end of Absalom. The lesson here is the people you discard today who were a blessing to you yesteryears and you think you'll never need them again. You've blocked them. You think you'll never need them again. You didn't tell them thank you. You didn't show gratitude to them. Rather, you're expecting more and more and more from them. The little they do, you complain. You want more. One day, they'll be in charge of signing some major, major documents that will determine your life or your death. Life, destiny. They will determine issues pertaining to your destiny. They'll be in the custody to either approve or disapprove. They'll be in the custody of the password leading to your survival in life. You may never know. Show gratitude, my friend. Be grateful to God and show gratitude to those that God has used for you. Hallelujah. Learn from the story of the 10 lepers in Luke 17, verse 11 to verse number 16. Jesus said, and were there not ten healed, how come only one return to give thanks to God? So God is particular about thanksgiving. He's particular about appreciation and gratitude. Show appreciation to God Almighty. Every day of your life, don't take things for granted. Show appreciation to those God has used to help you. Whether small way, medium way, or large way. Show appreciation anyhow. You were expecting ten, they gave you one. And you are looking and said, this one... And then there are people who have the habit of saying, well, you only gave me one, only one, only one. You were expecting ten. And then after saying only one, they say, well, thank you, do, although thank you for it. But you know, that's too late. Show appreciation first before you even complain. The Lord bless you until I come your way again. My name is Goe Gashita. Remain powerfully blessed. In Jesus' name, bye-bye.